had a guess, there's probably around about 100 animals or so going into this tank today. Which ones did we choose? Stay tuned to find out. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So the day has come at last. You've been waiting for three weeks now to find out the animals that are going into here. If you haven't watched part one and part two of this series, please go back and check them out. It was last Sunday and the Sunday before if you want to know the full story behind this setup. So let's take a quick look at it and then I'll show you which animals are going in today. Okay, so the first animal going to be going in here is a species you have seen before, the A. tessellata, or the full name popped just up here for you. Now these are a giant species of cockroach. Let's take a look at them and I'll explain to you why it is that these are going in this tank. So this is their current enclosure. You would have seen it only a few weeks back. Now here we have a juvenile or sub-adult just here. Look at those beautiful colorations. And I do believe the rest are probably hiding in this cork bark. You'll see them shortly, no doubt. Now, the reason I'm putting this species into the tank is because they're a long-lived species. They take quite a long time to sexually mature, probably around two years or so, and then they take a while to breed. So I wanted an animal that's gonna be going in there that will last for a long period of time. So when I like to breed animals, I like to check on them often, but something that's so slow breeding like this, you can almost forget that they're in the tank. And then one day you'll get a baby boom. Or at least that's what I hope. Obviously we will do maintenance, we will feed, we will water, but what I mean is not having to constantly check up on their breeding progress. So we'll start off with this sub adult or nymph here. Really quite a docile species, nice to handle. Let's pop this one in first. So here we have it. I have to excuse that blue light, I wanted a kind of eerie effect. It's a bit bright for the camera, but there we go. Oops, look at that. Did you see that? How it fell into the fog there. Now this fogger isn't gonna be on all the time, but I did put it on for today's video. Look at that guy or girl there. Just eerily coming through the fog, checking out some of the lichen on that branch there. So we're not gonna go through all of these because you have seen these in a previous video. If you haven't seen the video with them, go back and check out my brown color animals video not that long ago and you can see them in more detail. I just want to get these guys in so you can see the other species that we will be housing in here. Oh but look at it. Oh the effect of that fog is incredible. Hey buddy, let's get your family in here shall we? Go on, disappear into the fog, make it dramatic. You're not going are you? They never do what you want them to. Okay, let's get the rest in. There is definitely at least one more in here. Come on, let's get you out. And there it is. No, 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 no. Don't you come. Look at that. So that is an adult giant peppered roach. Come here. As I said, nice docile species, really good for kids, pretty hardy, awesome. And there it is, just sat on our plague doctor mask, our pestilence mask, an adult. So I only have a few of these, can't remember if it was six or seven now. I'll do the rest off the camera, because as I said, you've seen these guys before, but I just wanted to have a shot of an adult in here. Come on dude, let's scurry you away. No, you're quite happy on there, are you? 
Well, alrighty then. If that's where you want to be, that's where you want to be. So while I finish these guys off, how about pausing the video and having a guess at what other species are going in here? There is two different species more left to go in here. Oh, and springtails. We're not counting the springtails. And they are not cockroaches. So, two other types of animal? Take your guess. Okay, I know I was going to show you another animal, but something really exciting has happened here. Really, really exciting. I have here. Oh, I don't want to lose it. That's why I'm not picking up the camera. A baby. These guys have bred. They have bred. This is amazing. Oh, I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose it. Let's get it in. Now we've got a problem of I don't know how many babies are in here. And it's quite a deep, hefty enclosure and the babies do burrow. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to keep providing um, maybe a bit of cucumber or sweet potato in here each night, checking if there are any babies on it and removing them in here. because there's far too much soil left in here for me to put the whole lot in. But the effort is worth it for the fact that we've already braided, already braided, already bred the A. tessellata. Right, I promise you now, we're gonna go on to the next animal. Okay, we're now gonna put in a whole pot of springtails to help keep the environment that little bit cleaner. Although the roaches and other things are almost like keep clean up crew themselves, there is another animal going in that may make a bit of a mess. So I've got a tub from Dubia Paul, and he always supplies a really good amount of springtails in his pots at a good price. Now, just to let you guys know while I put in these springtails, I had a very quick scout of that enclosure and I got at least eight or nine babies put into this tank of the A. tessellata. So whew, that's a good start and hopefully there are a bunch more in there. I did find that two of the adults had now passed away. That could have been age. Hopefully I didn't do anything wrong, but the fact that we've got nymphs is fantastic. So with these, we're putting the whole tub in. We are literally pumping a tub. Like so, I'm going to close the container. So here's where I've dumped them. You can see them all rummaging around. I'm just going to spread this out a little bit. Put some sprinkles over here. Put some sprinkles over here as well. Doesn't really matter. They will get around. Okay, now as I promised, the next animal. And here we have it from Dubia Pool 2. These are a multicolour mix of armadillidium. So they can call them gem mix, you can call them jelly beans. I can't do this one handed. That's better. Um, and they come in various morphs. So as you can see, this one's almost tiger like, kind of orange with darkish stripes. We turn this over, we've got a few orangey ones in here. We've also got some greys and we have some slightly lighter white ones like over there. Now I've got the gem mix, I've got 20 of these and I've got them because they can occasionally pop out uh, some really funky tones. So you can have some that have maybe more yellowish beigey tones over some orange or you can have some greys with almost white parts on them. You can have a really nice selection. Like if you, you have a little look at this guy here this slightly whiter one. It does look a little bit orange in the in the camera there, but it is more whitish in person. And then you've got these deeper oranges. And you've got this one here. It's another lighter tone. Now there aren't any like super popped colours. You'll often find when you buy these, sellers will pop the colours to make it look like you really do have uh, jelly beans. But I am going to get more of these, hopefully at the Brighton show. Um, where I can actually look at tubs and see the different colour variations. And I got these because obviously multicolours for a two year old boy will be fun. Let's put them more in the light for you guys. Hopefully there you can see a bit more variation. Honestly I was hoping for a little bit more variation than what I got. But uh, 
they're still pretty cool we're still going to get some different coloration morphs popping out here and then when we extend this colony um, we'll have even more variation and then we can also try and uh, maybe breed out some specific colors have some of our own morphs maybe who knows but anyway i'm just going to pop these guys in and then i want to show you the final species that's going in here which is the one that i am really excited about it's an animal i've never kept before so let's get these guys in so that i can show you right can i one-handed do this of course i can i'm bugman sam right we are literally gonna tap them out it's raining pods and massage the little group there try and get them to scuttle i can't do this one-handed guys <laughs> i'll be back with you in a moment okay so they are in now these can conglobate they can roll into a ball i think this one is just trying to get up though and there i know we've got a blue light on but you can see some of the coloration of them they're like a marching band right now where's this other one do we need to help you out? Nah, I knew you got it. I knew you got it. And you can see the little gold flecks on that grey one. Pretty sweet. And don't worry, these guys can quite easily get off this head with the mask on. It's textured, so they should be able to crawl up on it and round it. That's why I got this specific uh, headpiece. The mask part is um, a bit more slippy, but it still has texture. So, shall we see what the final species is? And we have a lot of them. Before we continue this video, did you know that Bugrounds is affiliated with the Spider Shop? So when you next need a stunning new tarantula, some healthy live food, well-needed equipment, or just in the market for something unusual, please head over to the Spider Shop via my personal and unique link in the description below. This won't cost you anything extra but it gives me a little back in return for your loyalty. Thanks guys, now back to the video. If I just close this lid down, here. Five pots, and what are they? These are cave crickets. Look at that big one there. So they have real long spindly legs. They do breed in captivity a lot better than like your uh, feeder, normal feeder crickets do. I can't see why you couldn't use these as feeders too, but Theo absolutely adores crickets. So we know he likes roaches. We know he likes isopods. How did I know he liked crickets? Well, I tried to see how he was with spiders, but he didn't really care that there was a massive spider chomping down. What he cared about was the cricket running around. I didn't want to just get silent crickets, brown crickets, house crickets, your normal feeder crickets. So I went to Virginia Cheeseman and I ordered five pots while they were on offer. So these pots were on offer for $4.99 each and she says she puts a minimum of 12 in there. So we've got at least 60 of these plus the 20 isopods plus the roaches totaling at round about 100, maybe slightly less for this tank. So I think we should open one of these up and take a closer look at these crickets. Okay, so I'm gonna take the lid off, but we have to be careful that none of these get out because although Theo likes them, I don't want them loose in his bedroom. So I'm gonna assume that one there is an adult just by the sheer size of it. Those hind legs are massive, absolutely massive. These guys have beige and sort of ivory tones long feelers long legs just an alien looking species oh i am well chuffed with them they're even cooler looking than i expected now we've got a mix of sizes here so we'll have some babies we'll have some adults and hopefully we can get them to breed within the tank and if we get surplus we can maybe sell some on or just use them as feeders one day maybe we can do a special feeder edition but only when i know that I have a huge amount of these guys going. Oh, they're so cool. All right, let's get them in 
and we'll have another look at them when they're in the tank and not able to simply jump out. <laughs> okay, so for the first part, I will do this freehand and then I shall try and set up the camera while we do the others. See how well they jump. Will you jump? They definitely can jump because I can hear them doing it. Wow, so alien, so cool. Come on guys, whoa, that, oh, I think I missed that on the camera, but that was a hell of a jump. Bing, 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 bing. I think it was one of my, I felt like there was something on my hand. Right, is that all off of that tissue? Still more in the tub, let's get rid of the, oh, blimey. These are gonna be fun for him to watch. I got them as well because I expect them to be jumpy and active and he can check that out in his tank whenever he wants to. He's a very sensory child, which means he likes to see the fog. He would like to see the animals kind of pinging themselves around. All right, that's pot one of five. And do you know what? I don't know where any of them have gone. <laughs> where have they gone? It's all right, we have another four pots in there. I'm sure we'll be able to see them running around. Found one, just on the mask there. Oh, and it's gone. Awesome. So there we have it, a mixture of roaches, crickets and isopods. Now these crickets are hiding very well, but you can spot them when you look carefully. Another one on the mask there, focus, doesn't want to focus, but you can see it. There's another one there as well, look, a couple of crickets, oh, there's one on a bit of wood. Oh wow, my camera wants to focus on the foreground, but you get it right, they are there. And there were some beasts in here too, bigger than that first one I showed you. Hopefully you caught that on the camera. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the fogger off and we're going to have another look to see if we can spot any without the eerie effect. See how noticeable they are. Now while the fog is starting to die down, I've already started to notice more. Can you spot them there? There's a couple there at least. Maneuvering around on the moss part below the head. They are pretty hard to spot. But as I said, there is at least 60 in here. And I'm hoping that perhaps when it draws near a night time maybe, they'll be that little bit more visible for Theo to spot them. There's another one down there. Now these guys lay in soil and they lay more in the damper soil than the drier soil. But although there is a fogger in here, it's not a huge amount of moisture. So I'll be moistening more one side to the other so that all the animals in here can regulate. So here you can see without the fogger on. They like to hide. I notice a lot of them are hanging around the masks. Look at them there, look definitely more visible without the fogger on. How cool are they? Look, one's grooming. Oh, hello buddy. That's a good shot. You can see the full shape of the animal. There's another antenna I see down there. So you guys let me know in the comments below what you think of this. I think cockroaches, isopods and crickets are kind of a cool thing to go with the forest of pestilence. This dying decaying forest, and you know, they have locusts for plagues, I know crickets aren't locusts, but you know, similar type thing. Isopods kind of eat the decaying matter and the cockroaches will eat almost anything. I think it works. You guys let me know in the comments below what you think of this design 
and we will look to be adding more of these animals in the future too so we will get more of these cockroaches when available although that's quite rarely we will get more of that of the isopods definitely the crickets hopefully there's enough in there for us to get them breeding i am well chuffed with this though thanks for watching everybody take care and bye bye